Now Harlan's going to pray. So let's, let's bow in prayer. Father God, we are gathered here today for a very special day. We had the, the unfortunate, or shall we say the fortunate, Friday. But today, this is the Sunday. We are now risen. God Amen. bless us all. Amen. We, at, we, at this particular time, would like to acknowledge this, this wonderful choir behind us. The music is such a wonderful thing. We're going to celebrate today because this is a day that we have been, that we explore the resurrection. The resurrection is what this is all about. So I'm going to say God bless you all and we're going to start this this whole morning off with one of the greatest sounds that you're ever going to hear. And here it is. We are proclaiming this, the Sunday of Resurrection. Let us proceed. Amen. Capo. It's all right. Okay. Two, three, four. Early in the morning.
really special because Angela gets to play guitar again. Yay! Yay. How long has it been? It's been since January 28th. Oh. Praise God. Praise God.
You may be seated. Praise the Lord. The reason that we uh, had the shofar, the ram's horn blown, is because today is the feast of first fruits. What does that mean, the feast of first fruits? That would be the uh, second feast of the year of seven feasts in the Hebrew calendar. And the first being Passover. Jesus is the Passover lamb slain for us. And Jesus is the first fruits risen for us, where the best of the very first of the produce that came from the ground was to be brought to the Lord as an offering. And Jesus is the first fruits of the resurrection, the first fruits. And all that are in Christ are going to follow after the first fruits in the resurrection. Isn't that awesome? We believe in the resurrection. Resur <clears throat> of the dead. That's incredible because Jesus rose from the dead, giving hope to everyone. It's appointed for men to die once, and after this, the judgment, Hebrews 9, 27. Death is uh, inevitable for everyone, but life is available to all in Christ. Incredible. I never knew that. I didn't understand that. I thought it was an uh, old, you know, um, outdated, uh, you know, distant thought and religion and so forth. No idea how applicable it, it is to us. Not only is the Bible uh, relevant, it is present. The word of God and the life that's available to us. So it's amazing. And uh, if it's on anyone's heart, just to share uh, a two-minute testimony of how God changed you, of what it meant for you to come to Christ, then we want to make that mic right here available to you at this moment. Um, Think about that while I want to share a baptism that we're going to be having. So, Natalia, I'd like you to come up. Nicholas, you can come with her. And we're going to do this baptism uh, after service uh, in the Saanich Inlet. So, 
nice and cold. And uh, Natalia gave her life to the Lord how long ago? A few months ago. A few, four months ago. So praise the Lord. So. Yeah, so I'm not going to interview you right now and stuff, but when we're at the baptism, you know, sh she can share a word and so forth there, but we're going to pray for her right now. So if it's on your heart to, again, share about your baptism or something, how you, you were changed, then we'll open it up after that. But yeah, go, let's pray for her. Father, we thank you for Natalia. Lord, we thank you for her life. We thank you for uh, just that, Lord, you called her out to yourself and that work that you've done in her. And we're praying, God, that you would... So bless her this day. What a perfect day to have a baptism. And Father, we pray that you would encourage her heart with all that she is and has in our Lord and Savior Jesus, the Messiah. We pray that you would anoint her, encourage her, comfort her, bless her, empower her, strengthen her, and be with her all her days. We thank you for her, Lord. And we thank you that, Lord, there's going to be people out there celebrating with her today that life that she has in you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You're welcome. So you can use that mic. So, Jamie, is this on? Nope. Nope. There, there we, go. we go. So anybody who's wanting to come and witness, you're all welcome to come. Please chat with me afterwards. I'll tell you where and what time and all that type of stuff, okay? Yeah, thanks. Yep. Great. So, uh, yeah, does anyone want to come up at this point? At this point, we can also make it available after. All right. Pray about it, maybe after the message. Uh, let's pray for the kids. Siobhan and Steve are going to be going down with them. Father, we thank you for the children. We pray you minister to them today and that your uh, spirit would do a special work in their lives. And bless Steve, bless Siobhan. Thank you for them so much, Lord, that they're servants in this way. In Jesus' name, amen. So as the kids are dismissed, hey, if, if you ever want to volunteer and serve with the children's ministry, that's always needed, and uh, it's, a, it's a blessing. So it's uh, shepherding and loving the children and being with them. It's a great way to serve uh, others in the body of Christ and, and be part of the fellowship. So um, you can always speak with myself or Lloyd or Siobhan or somebody else afterwards, um, Dawn especially, and, and we can help you know what that is about. Uh, if you need a Bible today, we'd love to pass one out to you because we're going to be going through some different scriptures. So raise your hand if you need a Bible. A couple up front here and up front here and on that side. So as always, we're going we're gonna to be looking at a bunch of texts. Um, typically, we'll go through a chapter of the Bible, but today it's a little bit different because of Resurrection Sunday. And... There is a word that I want to impress onto our hearts today. And it's a word that is replete throughout the Bible. From the beginning in Genesis 1 throughout. It's in Hebrew, it's in Greek, and there are many forms of this word. And the word is according. According. What a strange word. It's not the word and. That would be throughout the Bible. You know, it's, it's not another word, but it's the word according. And to define the word is kind of hard because it's got various forms to it. And it's translated in many different ways. Uh, and again, there's the several languages going on here. But it really means to, be, to come down or from something, according. To be a, a descent through something. So according to generations would be a descent through the DNA of the genealogical line of a family or a tribe or people. To come through something, to originate or, or derive or be sourced in and according to, according, according to. And I, I think of accord. I think of accord and there's many strands, many, many strands here making up accord. And they're all supposed to be running in the same twist and direction, beginning and continuing together, and they make a chord. A chord. I also think of a, a chord like you would play on a piano or a guitar, a stringed instrument where you play several notes, different notes. We have different personalities, and each string is unique here, but together they make a chord. And, and when you play a chord on an instrument, you're harmonizing 
and you're playing together in unity to make a beautiful sound together. And God made everything. God made everything. He's the creator, and it was good. Everything is in order. And that's another word for according is order. And the first place we see according is in Genesis 1. So I hope you have a week, because we're going to go through the whole Bible <laughs> with the word according. No. <clears throat> Genesis chapter 1 and verse 11. And we're going to see the first time we're looking at the word according. Genesis 1.11. Then God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed, and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth. And it was so, verse 12, and the earth brought forth grass, the herb that yields seed according to its kind. And the tree that yields fruit, whose seed is in itself, according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the third day. So we have this according to the seed that is uh, within that plant. And that seed is going to reproduce according to the original design. And according to its kind. Now, continue in Genesis 1. Look at verse uh, 24. <clears throat> Genesis 1, 24. That word according goes throughout day 4, day 5, and so forth. And then and God said in verse 24, let the earth bring forth, bring forth. There's this word again. The living creature, according to its kind, cattle and creeping thing and beast of the earth, each according to its kind. And it was so, verse 25, and God made the beast of the earth according to its kind, cattle according to its kind, and everything that creeps on the earth according to its kind. God And God saw that it was good. In verse 26, then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So we have this word according here, and everything in creation comes from, develops, uh, grows, and acts, and lives according to its design, according to its kind, reproduces according to its kind. Newsflash, monkeys never created people. <laughs> monkeys don't reproduce people. It's never been seen. It's never been witnessed. There is a missing link because it's missing. And by the way, there's no chain because no donkey turned into a monkey and no, you know, other thing before donkey turned into a donkey and whatever. The, there's no chain. Surprise. They, they taught people that there's been this chain from goo to monkey to you. And there's only one missing link. We're looking for it. Pig's tooth found in Nebraska. South Dakota, you know, you know, and, and no, I'm sorry. Although there's commonality in the structure of things, airplanes have wheels and cars have wheels, but my car is not an airplane. It's a different vehicle altogether. It does very different things and so forth. You know what? You find out that when you look at everything created, it lives and reproduces according to its kind. Newsflash, aliens did not seed life on planet earth newsflash we are not born out of nothing nothing exploded created everything and everything means nothing have a good life i was on a search for meaning i was lost i didn't know why i lived and i believed in both evolution and aliens and all this other stuff that i was told to believe in and there was no value in my life, no meaning in my life, no purpose in my life, and I was searching. I wanted it. I needed it. It was a natural drive to go find it. And exactly what we see is that everything creates according to its kind. Now, within the cat kind, feline kind, you have variations. And did you know tigers and lions can mate? and be, There is a liger. There are ligers out there. But you don't get dogs and cats mating and reproducing. Now, you can have a mule which is the reproduction of a horse and a donkey, but a mule can't even reproduce. The genetics just fall apart. But that's all within that kind. You don't have horses and cows getting together or anything else like this happening. It just doesn't work. 
Everything's according to its kind. Now, this word according uh, in its many forms are in literally thousands of places in the Bible. So we're not going to go deep into that, but there's according to the law, according to his heart, according to her prayer, according to their strength, according to prophecy, according to righteousness, according to the will of God. It's all over the place. The day being the resurrection, the feast of first fruits, because Jesus rose from the dead. He, it's called uh, Easter is the German in resurrection and resurrection Sunday, we also call this. But Jesus is the first fruits. So what does according have to do with the resurrection? What is going on? What does it answer is it has a lot to do with the resurrection. It has a lot to do with it. And I hope that we see that here today. Um, the promise of hope and forgiveness of sins and eternal life. That everyone who has trust in Jesus has their old nature uh, put to death and has, according to Jesus' death, has that forgiveness, has that washing, has that uh, removal of the power of sin, and now has or have, you have a new nature, a new life, according to Jesus' resurrection. It's, it's really important to understand this. We are born in Christ. Anyone that accepts Christ, we are born according to a new nature. A new nature. You have the old way and the old according to and a new according to. A new nature. We are dead to the old and alive to the new. We have been transferred from the life of Adam to the life of Christ. You have a new family tree, a new uh, origin, being born again in Christ. This is powerful, and Christians need to understand this. Believers, the lost need to understand this. What makes believers different? What makes people in Jesus different? I've been forgiven. I've been washed. I've been set free from living according to the flesh, according to the world, according to the sinful nature, and now I can live according to Christ. I don't, I'm not under the power, the dominion of this life anymore. I'm under the freedom that I have in Christ, but I still revert back to those old ways. I still go back to living in the, the former mindset. I need to understand this. Between these two is me and my brain that trips me up and my body that holds me up and my lust. And I need to face one or I need to face the other. I am new in Christ. That's a fact. I'm new in Christ. The old is gone. The new has come. But sometimes I forget. So we're going to look at some scriptures, but I want to pray first. Father, we pray that you would show us what it is to walk in the spirit. Show me, pray that, ask the Lord, who I am according to the resurrection. Who am I according to the death and resurrection of Christ, according to our new life? Who am I? In Jesus' name, amen. So we're going to ask that the Lord shows us what a walk in the Spirit is and that what everyday gospel living is. Everyday gospel living is understanding, reckoning, the reality of not being in the old, but being in the new. That's the power of the gospel. It didn't just affect you once in the past, that day I said, yes, Jesus, come into my life. The gospel is so amazing and, and expansive that it applies to us every moment of every day. The death of Jesus cuts us free, cuts us free from living according to the sinful nature. The resurrection of Jesus gives us new life. We're born new to live according to his life and power. We used to live, again, according to the fleshly nature. Also, we'll see these words, carnal nature, which means a, a real worldly, sinful mindset, a fallen nature, according to Adam. Hey, we used to live according to our kind, didn't we? Sometimes they still do. We lived according to our kind, the fallen nature in Adam. Are we living according to our kind in Christ? Ephesians, let's turn there, please. Ephesians in the New Testament. Help your neighbor find it. It's in Ephesians, uh, the New Testament, of Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. Um, Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4. 
Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 17, um, no longer live this way in the futility of your mind. Understanding that's darkened, verse 18. Being separated, alienated from the life of God, the ignorance, the mindset, because of the blindness of the heart. And then in verse uh, 20, it talks about now thinking this way. You've not so learned Jesus, learned Christ. If you've heard and been taught by him and the truth that's in him, putting off the former conduct in verse 22, I'm, I'm summarizing a bit, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. Look at that. So you used to learn how to do things this way. That's a darkened life, a heart, a, and it was deceit. I was deceived. Oh, I really thought I used to. I used to get drunk a lot in my teenage years. So I don't. I don't drink alcohol anymore because for me it could be a temptation. I'm not stumbled when someone has a glass. Now, when you're intoxicated, it's not right. You're under the power of something, and I know what it's like to be under that power. So I don't. I, I just. I, I'm done. And, and I don't. I don't judge and condemn people. I have compassion on people, but I used. I used to live in this mindset. That never brought me freedom. It brought pain. It brought danger. It brought stupidity. It brought recklessness. It brought breaking of relationships and just problems into my life. Momentary, uh, you know, lap, you know, moving away from my problems and thinking I'm having a good time. But then I wake up. And and I used to live according to the ways of what the world was telling me. My understanding was darkened. I didn't know the life of God. This is all of us. And, and, and then you find, but in Christ, you haven't learned Christ. You're, you're being taught in truth. There's a, there's a former conduct, and it's an old man which grows corrupt according to deceitful lusts. Now we're taught a new way. See, the old man, not an elderly person, the old man of me, of you, lived according to deceitful desires, tricking us, fooling us. And that's what it is to be a fool. And verse 23 shares the transition from that old to that new. Verse 23 in Ephesians 4 says this, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. There's this transition right there. And verse 24, and that you put on the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness, being separate from this other way. A new man. So there's the old man and there's the new man. The order of our living from to. You can think of a navigation uh, bearing or direction. You set your compass that way. You've set your course that way. That's the way you're going. Think of the foundation of something, a blueprint, and the framing of something. According to what? How are we going to build this building? All you who are in the and construction or design or whatever industry, you find out oh, it's going to be according to the plan, according to this blueprint. The fundamental way of your life is according to, is according to the nature of Adam, which is why we sin, where it comes from, or the nature of Christ. Two family lines in the human race. There are not many races. That's, I, we, the Bible does not teach racism anywhere. It teaches those in Adam and those in Christ. That's it. And, and that's your race. Your course is this way or your course is that way. We're running according to the course of the world or, or in Christ. And we've been taken from darkness to light, from death to life, from old to new. And our life is now according to Christ, not according to Adam. We used to live out life according to the old nature. That's the old man. Now in Jesus, we live out life according to the new nature, new source. And this nature is created. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Created in Christ. It's created according to Jesus, who came to save us from ourselves, from sin, from this family line, uh, which is doomed. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16. 
This is what it is to be in a sound mind, which verse 13 says, and uh, verse fifth, uh, chapter 5, verse 16. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. According to the flesh, the old nature, the carnal mind, that's all the same in Adam. Now, these just transferable words. We regard no one according to the flesh, for even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, the body, yet we now know him thus no longer. He's risen. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Metamorphosis. Old things have passed away. They've died. Behold, all things have become new. They become new. Not reformed. Not changed. You know, absolutely transformed. A new order of creation. A new DNA in your spirit. A new order. Completely different. And that is seen in the spiritual but I'm still in this body, I still have this personality, all these other things, so sometimes we don't get it. But what we need is to have our mind renewed, the spirit of our mind renewed. We need this thinking changed. The way that we think is to be new. See, the old way was taken to the cross, taken to the cross with Christ and and died with him. That old way of living leads to death. And so he just expedited it. And and the course and direction of the flesh and of the world's way, that's the way it's going. The new is made alive through the resurrection from the dead. That new way of life is in Jesus. Uh, I think of a stream, a stream running in a certain direction. I, I, you know, I don't go to a stream, say gold stream around here, and then you see it, oh, it's running backwards today. That's funny. I wonder why that's happening. No, it runs the same way. That's the course it goes in. Those fish are... We're now learning and growing according to our kind. Which way are we going? And we are running against the grain of the world. It's not popular to be a Christian. I remember thinking, uh, losers. That's what I remember thinking. I remember thinking, no fun, no joy. I had no idea that all the joy is actually in Jesus. Why are Christians happy? The world said they aren't supposed to be. You know, that's not the way for happiness. And the world can't find it. What gives? All the joy is in Christ. I've had it for like 22 years now. Joy in Jesus. So different. So let's look real quick in Romans 6. We're going to look more about what it is to have this new life according to uh, the gospel kind, you could call it. Romans chapter 6, verse 1. What then shall we say? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Now God gives so much grace, favor towards us. Certainly not. How should we who died to sin live any longer in it? We've died to it. Do you understand that? Do I understand? I'm I'm dead to that way, the way that's according to sin. We don't live in that anymore. Certainly not. Verse 3, or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized, that means sunken into, drowned with, into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should also walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united together, watch my hands, united together in the likeness of his death, even so, even so, what does it say? Certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection, united together with Christ in the likeness of his death. So, yeah. If we, were, if we died with him, hey, you die without him or you die with him? You're going to die. <clears throat> die with Christ, you get to rise. You get to rise. You won't face the second death, which is hell. 
you get to have the resurrection and eternal life. Why is there evil in the world? Why is there corruption in the world? Because of sin, because of rebellion from God, who is life, who is joy, who is all of these things emanate from who God is, eternally perfect. There's no error, no corruption, no problem. And, and, and therefore, you know, walking away from God, you're turning from all that is good, all that is true. And we use these words, holiness and righteousness. These aren't judgmental words. They're words describing perfection. You want, you want a world without pain and suffering? Well, you need one where God reigns, where his kingdom is the kingdom overruling it all. Turn from him, and you've turned from light. Therefore, you're in darkness. You've turned from life. Therefore, you're in the way of death. And that's what we see. You don't need a science experiment to figure that out. So if we're united together with him in his death, we are, will be united together with him in his resurrection and already are. We are new. Knowing this, verse 6 of Romans chapter 6, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. Slaves of sin. No longer slaves of sin. Do you know what it's like to be a slave of sin? Yeah, all of us should say, yeah, I've been a slave to it. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Thank you. <clears throat> knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion or power over him. For the death that he died, Romans 6.10, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. That order, likewise, you also understand, reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let's read to 12 through 14. Therefore, do not let sin rule, reign in your earthly mortal body, that you should obey it in its lusts, in its desires. Do not present your body, your members, as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, living in accordance with, but, in, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead, and your members, that's your body, as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace." Powerful. Sin doesn't have dominion or power over the person who is crucified with Christ and risen with Christ. New creation, born again, that transfer. Sin doesn't have power and dominion over you. Now, we may choose to go back and live in that way. We have to learn. We have to grow according to our new nature. We have to appropriate who we are. And how and why does sin not have that power? See, keeping the law doesn't matter. If I become a believer in Jesus, I've got to keep a lot of rules. Actually, no. Love. You need to let love invade your heart, permeate your life, the love of Christ in you, and then through you, you will, by the nature of the new man in Christ, keep his laws. It's not a bunch of rules pushing you and telling you you're not keeping it. It's a new nature that happens to keep it. It's freedom from rule and law. In that way. And now, this is the new covenant. You know, it's not trying to be moral uh, more and more. That didn't, that doesn't bring me out from the power of sin. I'll just try to white knuckle it and grit my teeth until I stop feeling this way. I need to reckon and understand something has happened called the good news, the gospel. I had to die. There had to be a real a death that occurred to my former kind and be born into a whole new life stream. The blood of Adam, guess what the sentence is? Death. All born of that bloodline. All have fallen short of God. Now, the blood of Jesus brings conclusion to that order and breaks a person free because his blood was perfect. He was born sinless and he lived a free life from the power and authority of sin. He was not, Jesus was not born in the order of the old man or Adam. He came new and is the first fruits of a new order of humanity. It's awesome. And so everyone in him, though he took on a human form like that of Adam, died on behalf of, he is perfect and holy and righteous, therefore dying on my behalf, he can pay my penalty that I couldn't pay. He could pay it for me. 
He has the value and the holiness to do it for me. And he becomes for us holiness, righteousness from God. He becomes wisdom for us and all of that. So being in him, uh, the blood of Christ brings conclusion to that order and breaks a person free from that family tree. And in his resurrection brings us into a new order, a new kind, according to its kind, a new family tree. And we're no longer under that dominion and power of sin. So we can just do whatever we want, Romans 6, 1 says. No, because we're actually under a new dominion and new power now. We won't do whatever we want. We will live in righteousness. Our life is, will be washed and changed. So under this new dominion and power, what does that look like? Flip to Romans chapter 8. Turn to Romans 8 and verse 1. And we'll see a new term that starts out here. Therefore, uh, there is therefore now no condemnation. No, there's no condemnation. You're not damned to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Walk, having a walk a, that is according to the flesh or a walk that's according to the spirit. Here's a new term. A walk according to the flesh, a walk according to the spirit. If you're ever in the airports, the bigger ones, they have the moving pathways. And on one side of the you know, terminal, they've got a moving pathway moving that direction. On the other side, they've got a moving pathway moving in that direction. And you can be on that path and be like, I'm not walking. Yeah, you are. You're moving. You're walking that way. You're in that stream. Dead fish don't run upstream. They float down. And there you are, just going down that way, according to the flesh, according to the world. You have to be removed from that walkway and put on one that is in an entirely different one, an entirely different direction and order that is literally going the opposite. How do you do this with arms? Opposite way. It's going the opposite way of the other one. And the flesh, a walk according to the flesh is the opposite way of a walk according to the spirit. Verse 2 of Romans 8 says this, For the law of the Spirit of life in Messiah, Yeshua, Christ Jesus, has made me free from the law of sin and death. The Spirit sets us free. The law of, of walking in Christ and the gospel, the legality of what occurred in Jesus' death and resurrection, it sets us free. We are criminally set free. And we are given new life and set free from that old DNA, that old order. So uh, of, of the law of sin and death. We can't, it's, these are inescapable laws, by the way. These aren't like laws that a, a, a municipal council came up with. Can't build your fence six feet high or something. You know, these, these are eternal laws written to the fabric of everything. And of the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus sets us free. Uh, now, verse 3, for the, what the law could not do and that what is weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, in the likeness of, but he was not sinful. On account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. This is Jesus, why he died, came in a human form, that the righteous requirement of the law may be fulfilled in us, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. There it is again. Do you see it? A walk according to the flesh and a walk according to the spirit. What's this walk look like and mean? Verse 5 of Romans 8. For those who live according to the flesh, what's it look like? Well, they set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, those who according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded, worldly minded, uh, is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. To live according to the flesh, to live according to the spirit, walk according to the flesh, walk according to the spirit, is to have a mind set on these things. The things that just engross the, the carnal mind, it's just selfishly driven, and we don't know how to escape it. This is why the gospel is the answer, the good news to us, so we can escape it. That old nature, it's a mindset 
on the things of the world, on the things of the flesh, and never satisfied, never fully pleased, lost. It's a darkness. And the last time I checked, I walk in the direction I'm facing. It's a mindset. We thought it was funny yesterday. A group of us were hiking around Thetis, and, and Sean's uh, dog was going into the water, and it's a puppy, but he's you know going into the water, and then he had a he was like, oh, I'm backing out. And it's like he put it into reverse. And he was like, uh, 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 uh. and he would kept backing out and chasing the sticks. And it was just real funny looking. And everybody thought that was humorous. I don't walk that way. If you saw someone walking everywhere they went, you know, sideways, backwards as they walk, you know, I come. It's just weird. Not, that doesn't happen. We walk in the direction we're set on. And if your mind is set on the things of the flesh, what do you expect to happen? And if your mind is set on the things of the Spirit, what can you expect to happen? A walk in the Spirit, a mindset on the things of the Spirit, on the things of heaven, on Jesus, on his kingdom. I tell you what, it looks a lot better than Satan's kingdom, which is what we're in. He's the ruler uh, and the principalities of the, the, the power of the air. He's the ruler of the sons of disobedience. See a lot of murder in the world, a lot of lying in the world, a lot of evil in the world. Yeah, that's right. That's the course of it. That's what's happening. Jesus' kingdom is going to be so awesome. So it's an outlook, okay? And the results of this, this stream or this highway of thought is described in Romans 8, 6 there. The results of that are, are to be carnally minded is what? Death. That's just blunt could you soften it a little hey man look around i know like we like to put it out of sight not think about it anymore you know but to be carnally minded is death this world's full of death and death is not good it's not part of the natural order of karma and all this reincarnation all this garbage death is a intrusion and evil a result of evil i like God's plan way better than anything the world could tell me. Because the world tells you, you'll just keep dying until you might ever get it right. And if you ever do get it right, then you just be part of, become part of the global, noth the universal nothingness. And you, you lose all your personality and all your individualism, and you are nothing now. And part of that universal nothing. Great. Great. The Bible tells us that death is an intrusion. See, when God said, and it was good, it was good, it was good, it was good. It was good. There was no dying, there was no death. Everything was in harmony and righteousness and holiness, and it was beautiful, and it was lovely, and it was wonderful, and there was work, and there was creativity, and there was joy, and there was freedom, and all these good things. And the man says, you know, I think I want to go Satan's way. Yeah, let's do that. You're keeping something back from me, I know it. So man submits to Satan, and Satan gets the rule. And we are here now. But God came into that to bring an answer and a reconciliation to redeem Adam's race. So death, and then in verse 6, what is the result of the highway of thought of moving toward and living in the spiritual mind in Romans 6? But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. You want peace in your life? Well, get a spiritual mind and you get it. It's yours. Life and peace. That's blunt too, by the way. And that's great news. Verse 7, the carnal mind is enmity against God, at war against God, hostile towards God, for it is not subject to the law of God. And the law of God is ultimately to love. Nor indeed can be. Its nature is totally different. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Oh, God just wants people to please him. Oh, Really? God just, that's all he wants? I tell you what, life and the spirit pleases God. It's God's way. I'm not offended that the worldly nature and the results of all of that stuff in my life don't please God. In fact, that makes me love God more and understand his nature more. Why should death please God? Why should rape please God? Why should manslaughter or child man stealing excuse me or any of the evil things please god our god is good isn't that good that 
these things don't please God? I think that's great. It's good news. There's an answer for the problems now. And so when, when we are living according to the sinful nature, it doesn't please God. That's not what's best for you. That's not what brings life or joy or freedom or peace. So verse 9 continues in Romans 8, and it says, But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. Another those terms. If indeed the Spirit of God lives in you. Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. You, it doesn't, you don't belong to him. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. Now you're not ruled by your body. You're ruled by the Spirit. You have a new dominion. There is a rule of law, and it's the Spirit which brings life and freedom and peace. Um, but in verse 11, if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. So your body gets to have eternal life too at the resurrection. Yes, I'm carrying around a body of sin, a body of death. It's hanging on to me, this corpse that always tries to influence me and pull me under its power, but I don't have to obey it anymore through appropriating understanding gospel living, and now I can be set free and then live according to the Spirit because my body can be subject and I'm going to get a new body where righteousness lives inside of it. Very good news. Wonderful news. So we've got this, all these terms, flesh versus spirit, old man versus new man, old creation versus new creation, old mind set, outlook versus a new mind, a new outlook, new mindset, being in Adam, being in Jesus. And really, these are answers for us. You know, it, it is, the answer for us is to live in the spiritual life that Jesus has made possible for him, for us to live in that. In verse 12 in Romans 8, it says, therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according, there's the word again, to the flesh. Debtors means uh, under obligation. We're not under obligation to obey it anymore. Civil war going on inside of you, you're not under obligation to obey that party, to obey that system so how do I stop living according to the flesh? Live according to the spirit. Eureka. That's it. How do, you, how do I stop? How do I stop, you know, this horrid temptation, this life-dominating sin, this problem that keeps creeping up in my life, these thought patterns that keep happening? How do I stop? Live according to the Spirit. See, the law and me trying hard doesn't stop it. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. That's just me trying. Trying to resist this pull and urge. No, live according to the Spirit. Turn your face and your mind completely toward it. Get off the path, go over to the new one, and understand that I'm free from that path because I've been united together in his death, and I've been put over into a new order of living understanding the gospel. It's amazing. It's appropriating the gospel. It's real. It's present, daily, powerful. It really should be for us everyday gospel living. So now verse 14 to 17, read it in one go here. Um, oh, verse 13, skip that. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are, that's the answer. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God, children of God, born of God, sons of God. And that's what that is. By the way, you're a direct creation. Where it says sons of God throughout the Bible, you can look at the genealogy in Matthew of Christ and you go through the generations and it goes to Adam. Adam, son of God. Direct creation. Angels, sons of God. They don't have parents, direct creations. Well, you get to be a son of God, a child of God. You know, gender, gender here doesn't matter. It's male and female, sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage, right? You're slaves to sin. Again, to fear, because death is coming. But you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out. Now you're a child, Abba, Father. 
Then uh, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, and we have an inheritance because we're in him. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Now, here is something I want to focus on for the next moment. It's at the end there of verse 17. If we suffer with, that we may also be glorified with. Suffered with, glorified with. Do you see that? This is key. This is the gospel. Jesus died to wash away your sin, to break you free from its power, and he rose to give you new life, eternal life. Suffer with and glorified with him. And I, I, I know it's not popular to talk about the death or suffering or the, these things. Like, let's just talk about the resurrection. Let's only talk about these things. You know, the reality of it working out, there is no resurrection without the crucifixion. And you want a resurrected power in your life? Then you must understand the crucified power in your life as a believer. You will never walk in the plan God has for you, in the order he has for you. You can be born again and still living a very worldly life. You can be forgiven and live a worldly life. Now, we should be careful. We don't want to tempt the Lord, but, you know, if, if we understand that we are crucified with him, I'm dead to that. This is where the rubber meets the road in, in having victory and change in progress in our walk with God. And you get to experience peace, life, freedom, but a, but a dying needs to take place first. I don't want to do that. I just want to hear the good news. Just tell me who I am again. We have to understand there has to be a dying. Paul said what? I die. How often is that? Daily. Daily means daily. And here's a verse that God laid on my heart a long time ago. And I remember people talk about these ideas of life verses. That's my, that's my life verse, man. You know. And I, I felt like God gave me this one. But I tell you what, it's been hard to understand this verse. And at times I was like resistant. Like, oh, I don't, I don't know, but I'm going to pick a different life verse. <laughs> and it's Philippians 3.10. That I may know him. Oh, I like that part. And the power of his resurrection Again, woo. And the fellowship of his sufferings. Being conformed to his death. Oh, two really fun things at the beginning and two cutting things after that. Four points in that scripture, Philippians 3.10. I I heard it in the NLT the other day. In that version, it says, I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. Who wants to know that? Yeah. I want to suffer with him. Really? I want to suffer with him, sharing in his death. Paul got it. This is the key. Paul got the key. You want to know him? He's the one who died and rose. You want to know him? He has nothing to do with all of that garbage. He has nothing to do with it. And he's not going there. He's not going with you. You want to know him? You want to know the power of the resurrection in your life? You want revival? God, bring revival. Okay. Wait for it. Because he's, he's going to let you taste some death, some dying in your life. You want reviving new life? There's got to be some dying. In a thing, in an area, in an idol, in a place in our hearts, so that new life can take place in the soil of the crucified life. Sharing in his death, suffering, to share in the power of his death, one will also then share in the power of his resurrection. The old way, the old order, transferred to the new way and the new order. 
You can't be on both at once there. And it's moving in him and, and, and accepting that, but there has to be a dying of that old. And then the power of the resurrection is in one's life. And Romans 8, 17 says it. If indeed we suffer with him, we may be glorified together with him. Philippians 3, 10 says it. It's loud and clear. Now, Ephesians 3, 20, I'll read it to you. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly more than we can ask or think. He can do it. How do I do this? You don't do it. You just yield and say yes to God doing it. We have to say, no, I'm done. Yes, I want you. I don't want that anymore. I want you. I'm turning. That's repentance. It's turning from, turning to. Not stopping something out of your willpower, but choosing to accept his dominance in your life. Now, to him who's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, more than we can ask or think, according to the power that works in us. Power working in us in the resurrected life. Power that's according to the resurrection power. Breaking the law of sin and death. Rising from the dead. We need to recognize, as Galatians 2.20 says, I am crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live in this body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me, this motive of love taking place instead of selfishness. And Paul wants to participate in the death and suffering. Why? Because he knows it's freedom. Because he knows it's the path to the resurrected life, to power in the spirit. If we suffer with him, we will be glorified together with him. He who has ceased from sin, he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. You want it cut off in your life? Yeah, don't keep it like a pet. <clears throat> There's a death of the old self, and we want to live according to the spirit, which is life and peace, and to be led by the spirit. And watch what happens in your life. Maybe some people here need to make some cuts, some clean cuts. Maybe you need to come to Jesus in the first place. You've never said yes initially, and you're still of, of the old line. You're still there, completely wrapped up in the DNA of ancient Adam. And you wonder why life is the way it is. You hear these messages, you don't understand it, you think it's religion, you gotta put all that away and understand Jesus loves you. You're created in God's image came for you. He died for you so that he could wash away your sins. He washes away your sins. Nothing you could do. And his blood washes you away, away your sins, forgives you. And he gives you new life because he rose from the dead. He has all authority to do this, to transfer you from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of the power of the son of his love, to bring you into that new life. And, and if you want to participate in that new life and really get movement on that walkway, on that highway of holiness, then there's some cuttings that have to happen in the believer's life. It's a, it's, a, it's a repeated repentance that we walk in, and it's not, woe is me, and living in it, and downcast. Oh, it's such a hopeful word, this word repentance, because it's turning from, and it's turning to, and watch the growth in your life. Watch the power of the Spirit happen in your life. I can't stop myself. I can't stop. In the Spirit, there's power, though. There's a life to be able to say, no, that's not who I am, and that's not the way I live anymore. I'm new. I can, I can walk in love. You know, it's amazing, these two verses. One says that without him you can do nothing. How much? Nothing. Ouch. That's a pride puncher. Knocked out. Without him I can do nothing. But then Philippians tells us, in Christ I can do all things through him who strengthens me. I can live. I can walk in righteousness. I can change. And I can keep changing. I'm not stuck under the dominion and a slavery to sin anymore. And as a people get together that have experienced that new life in Christ, we want to keep staying in that. Look at how many chords are in this. You know, hundreds there. We get to all live according to Christ together. We're going that way. We're going that way. Anyone that wants to come can come. Everyone's invited. Doesn't matter your history. Doesn't matter what you've done. Doesn't matter where you've been. Let it go. Accept Jesus. Say, yes, I believe you died for me and rose for me. And then we live according to the pattern in Christ together. That new nature. And in Acts 
you see a community of people doing that. We'll have the worship team come up now. Yeah, go ahead, come up, guys. In the book of Acts, we see a people who are doing that together. So I'm just going to read a few verses as the worship team comes up. Acts 1.14, these continued with one accord. They continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus and his brothers. And they had one accord together. In Acts chapter 2, verse 1, when the day of Pentecost had fully come. Now we start counting today, 49 days, and we reach Pentecost. Okay? So when the day of Pentecost had come, Fully, they were all with one accord. You want unity in the church? Let's do it. One accord is what they were in. And, and so who should we conform to? Jesus. Not Cameron's ideas of how things, no, Jesus. We conform to Jesus. All of us conforming to Jesus were running that walk, you know, together. And, if, and the last verse here, Acts 2, 46 so continuing daily, continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. We get you know, saved from that old and brought into that new, continuing daily with one accord. Our DNA changed, I believe it. We have been transformed. You know, We get new bodies. Jesus' blood sets us free. Such an awesome thing. And may we live and grow as believers according to the spirit, according to the new man, according to the family tree that Jesus began, a new family of origin. Do you want that in your life? If you, if you have not been brought into the new family of origin, you can say yes. I want to be brought into the new family of origin. I want to be brought into Christ. And Jesus will bring you in. What you need to do is say, yes, I want to be brought in. In your heart, you say yes to God. I want to be brought in. I want the forgiveness. I don't want to be judged for my sins. I want to be washed and cleansed of them, and I want to be set free. I want to come into the life that I heard about, that I see around me, and Jesus will set you free. Now, if you want to pray that prayer and, and confess that, do so. But I'd also ask that you publicly acknowledge that, that you stand up or you come tell me you have to tell somebody because now you're in that new life. And, and, and that's the first step of acknowledgement in the mind, of recognizing it. And as believers, if there's work that you need to do in your heart recognizing it, I would encourage you to do that as well. Father, thank you. We give you praise. You're worthy. We want to worship you for the gospel, and we pray that you'd help us to have everyday gospel living. We pray that you'd help us to walk in the light. We pray that you'd help us to renounce the hidden things of shame. We pray that, God, you would help us to understand the new nature that we have in Christ and to repeat that over and over. Thank you for your love and your mercy and your grace. Thank you that there's no condemnation. You love your kids, and you just want to keep helping them. You love us so much. You've done all that work for us. And now we just need to yield. We just need to acknowledge that you've done it. And to repeat acknowledging, you know, that you've done it today. You've done it today. Lord, you've set us free from the law of sin and death. We thank you so much for loving us. And we pray, God, that you'd help us to walk in that new nature. In Jesus' name, amen. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good morning. Hello. I read a story this morning about the thief on the cross. And when he died, he went to heaven, and there was an angel there with a checklist and was asking him questions. He said, did you follow the Ten Commandments? And the guy's looking at him. What's that? He said, uh, did you pay any tithes or offerings? He goes, oh, I don't know. What's that? So the angel calls his supervisor and said, this guy doesn't know anything. Like, what's he doing here? And they were talking, and they asked the man, well, why are you here? He said, the man on the middle cross said I could come. And he didn't have to do anything except trust in Jesus. So, amen. Amen.
Hello. Uh, yeah, I've been waiting on getting baptized and just kind of lost in not walking with Jesus and trying, but not getting there. So, yeah. Amen. Cam, could I get baptized today, maybe, or sometime soon? Maybe at the ocean today. All right. Man of sorrow, Lamb of God, by his own.
Holy Spirit to sing like a dove. I saw his body broken in love. sent his son they called him Jesus he came to love heal and forgive he bled and died to buy my pardon an empty grave is there to prove my Savior Because Christ lives 
than one day I'll cross that river I'll fight life's final war with pain And then as death gives way to victory I'll see the lights of glory and I'll know he reigns because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I be seated. I just have a couple of quick announcements. There's things going on coming up this week, and I'd like you to hear about them. We don't want to, you know, intrude in the middle of uh, the worship time and word with announcements. So we just put them at the end so that um, you can be aware there's, there's more gatherings and more things happening that are coming up. Before I do that, I just want to tell you this quick story. Um, I heard the unofficial record of what happened when Joseph of Arimathea, who was uh, a wise councilman and very wealthy living in Jerusalem at the time of Jesus. And he, he took the body of Jesus and laid it in his own tomb. They had a brand new tomb, very expensive, in town and everything. And so um, even today, the whole hillside covered in tombs on the Mount of Olivet, millions of dollars for a space right there. So Joseph has a whole tomb, this big tomb there. And the unofficial record was uh, shared by Chuck Smith, Pastor Chuck Smith. And, and he said this, that... It occurred this way, where uh, Joseph and Pilate ended up talking because Pilate had to set the seal on the tomb and sent guards over there and everything. Um, so Joseph is asked by Pilate, you know, why are you giving your expensive tomb to this criminal? Died on the cross and nobody likes him and you're this prominent member of society and you're giving him your expensive tomb. And Joseph says, oy vey, it's only for the weekend. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah, that's a good one. All right, so a couple announcements. The first one, really, really important here. We've, we've got uh, Pastor Anthony and his wife, Alejandrina, and they are from Calvary Chapel, Redmond, Oregon, longtime friends of ours, knowing him since I was first born again 22 years ago. And they, they're coming up to our all-church campout. Now, everybody is welcome to come to this. There are some nice rooms there for uh, couples, if you think this is really roughing it, there are just a few rooms that are really nice. So we'll reserve those, you know, for elderly and uh, just couples that want to be in a hotel-like room. You could always stay off-site as well, but uh, if you want to sleep in a tent, you're welcome to. If you want to sleep in the cabins, and the cabins are all um, ready, modded out for winter eyes and all that, and we've stayed in them, some of us before, with a youth camp, and they're really nice. So uh, the facility's great, the location's amazing, and there's uh, really fun stuff to do, and we're going to have great teaching times with Pastor Anthony. Um, so let's get out there, get, get together for the long weekend, May long weekend. There are brochures that give you the information on it right here. The registration is really simple uh, at mosaicchurch.ca. You can register there and join us for that weekend, and we'll share meals so that you're aware of what we're going to do. Instead of spending a lot and having the camp cook for us, we'll cook together, and we each take on a meal or two, and um, it's just a great time. We're going to be doing little sunset hikes and other things, and a lot of the, uh, 
The activities are all optional, lots of free time in the schedule, but, um, but some really good sessions, some men uh, only and women only sessions, you know, and games and fellowship. So check out this brochure and consider what you're doing May long weekend and come out for a time with us. And our theme is a walk with God. That's the theme that is going to be shared on. And the next announcement uh, is happening at the end of this month, April 29th and 30th. So a Saturday night and a Sunday, we have uh, Charles Price with us. Excellent preacher. He knows the Lord. He's just a humble brother in Christ. And so he'll be here on a Saturday night, April 29th, just a couple weeks away at 6.30 p.m. So I would encourage you to get here around 6, be here on time, and and. Let's have a great time where he's going to share the word of God with us. And then on Sunday, uh, our Sunday service this time at 1230, he will also be speaking and our guest speaker. So I really encourage you to come out. Uh, He has a wonderful book called Alive in Christ. And it's just about what I was sharing in the New Covenant. It's a wonderful read. So I'd encourage you to come here. uh, Charles Price, present the word to us on those two nights. Uh, We also have this going on where the Addictions Recovery Center, ARC, that's that uh, brick building at the corner of Johnson and Wharf, right? Right down there uh, by Market Square and what used to be the Blue Bridge, and that's right downtown, and that's the last standing dry recovery center, meaning no alcohol and drugs allowed on premises. It's the last standing one. They have more men in that center than any center in Victoria, They've got a whole floor that is only um, men who have just come out of prison, paroled, and so forth. And so, hey, we have an opportunity. They said, can you guys come out and hold a service? Can you just come out and, and share testimony and music and just be with us? And we said, yeah, let's do it. So on May 7th, if it's on your heart, come out. We'll have a prayer night there in that space. And then May 14th, we're going to host the service. And I'm looking for the time where... Um, other guys, other men and women, there you're going to be sharing. You're going to be sharing how God changed your life, what's gone on in your life, and we're just going to meet these guys where they're at and, and pray that God works in their lives. It's a wonderful opportunity to visit um, the, the least and lost, right? So it's a great, great time coming up there. Uh, children's ministry, we announced that earlier, so praise the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and give you his peace to know that he smiles upon you, to know that he's for you and with you, and that if anyone is in Christ Jesus, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have been made new in your life. You're not bound. You're not under slavery anymore. You're a son, not a slave. You're a, you're a free daughter and son of God, and, and he who the son sets free is free indeed, and his resurrection is evidence of that. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you. Have a great week.